Hi everybody. The topic of the day today is tequila, uh, which I thought would be appropriate seeing as some of you may know today is International Margarita Day. So I'm going to be talking about tequila today and for the rest of this week I'm going to be doing a whole series on agave spirits in general. So some people may not know but apart from tequila there are lots of other agave spirits made in Mexico so we're going to be talking about all of them this week. So starting off with tequila because that is the one that most people know of and to be honest with you uh, tequila to Mexico is kind of like what champagne is to France. The two things kind of go hand in hand. But a lot of people don't know that tequila is actually not just made in the town of tequila. It is made in five different states in Mexico. So within those five different states, there are different um, designated sort of areas, uh, a bit like wine. And I have been to several talks about tequila and mezcal and all the other agave distillates. And um, uh, it was interesting that one of the talks I went to, the speaker did say that the most complicated thing in the world of drinks in uh, is wine, but the second most complicated thing in the world of drinks is um agave spirits like tequila because second to wine agave spirits like tequila are the ones that can be most influenced by their terroir so the soil the climate the altitude all of these things can affect tequila so that's why as i said there are actually five states in mexico where tequila is made so i'm just going to list them for you and um it's not all over these states it's it's in certain parts of these states but the five states are jalisco nayarit guanajuato michoacan and tamaulipas um so um i am going to list them in the blurb but that's just to give you an idea that um, there are strict rules about tequila. So within these five states uh, in Mexico, um, tequila is made from this plant, um, like I've mentioned, called agave. Now, agave, um, a bit like different grape varieties, there aren't quite as many types of agave, but there are um, actually about 200 varieties of agave plants. So the agave plant, a lot of people think it's like a cactus. It's actually not a cactus. Um, it's more of a succulent plant. That's what they call it. Um, and to make tequila, by law, you can only use one variety of this um, type of, of this agave. And it's called blue weber. Um, so that's why sometimes if you buy a bottle of tequila particularly if you're buying premium tequila, it will say 100% blue Weber agave or 100% blue agave, just to keep it short. So there is actually a lot of regulation around um, tequila because the, you know there are other less high quality tequilas that they're still tequila, but they only have 51% uh, blue agave in them um so by law if you're going to even put the word tequila on it you do have to have 51 percent blue agave so you might wonder why it has to be this specific variety of agave and it's to do with the makeup of the um the fibers and the carbohydrate and just the general overall flavor that that specific agave imparts that's why they use the blue weber but if you really want to get um, the best examples of tequila that aren't going to give you a headache and that, you know, aren't necessarily those ones that you would take a shot of at a party, the ones that you could actually enjoy and maybe sip, you know, as as a kind of on a, with a with a rocks glass, with a with a cube of ice or, you know, in a margarita that you would enjoy. You want to go for the 100 percent blue agave um, tequilas because they are the ones that tend to be the highest quality. So when it comes to um, just talking specifically about these agaves, because I really, I really want this vlog to be a lot about the actual making of tequila. You know, these agaves, they take years to grow. So they need at least seven years to grow. And most of them are harvested between seven and 10 years because these plants they're not like little cactuses, like I said, they're massive, they're absolutely huge and they're really, really hard to harvest. It's 
back-breaking work and there are men on the fields well they're not really fields because there's no grass but you know on the plantations of the agave fields who have to do this all day and um you know they they need to chop down these these agaves and it takes it you need you get about a hundred chop down a day and if you've got a really strong himador which is the name of the men that chop them down it will take you know they might they might chop 100 to 150 so if they're really strong workmen you might get 150 chopped down a day but it's really important that these agaves are replanted because for the tequila industry to be sustainable obviously for every um, agave that they chop down they need to replant because uh, they, these pla- these um, agaves take seven years at least to grow before you're going to use them again. So um, so that's a little bit about agaves in general. Um, and I want to post some pictures of agaves this week to really give people a sense of the plant and what they look like. And I'm going to be showing some chopped agaves so you can see what they look like when the workmen, the himidors, chop them up because they need to be chopped up to then be fermented and distilled into tequila. Now, tequila itself is, um, it's kind of a bit of an acquired taste because I think people who are used to sweet drinks, um, you know, like sweet cocktails, sometimes they don't really love tequila in cocktails because it has quite an earthy flavour. So uh, unaged tequila tends to have a lot of earthiness to it. Um, And then the ones that have been aged they will have some sweeter notes to them. Um, So, you know, because they've been in barrels for however many months or years, they would have maybe, they'd have earthy notes, but they'd also have, um, you know, some vanilla or some caramel notes, particularly the ones that have been aged for longer in the barrels. So just to give you a breakdown of the age statements of tequila, if it's a tequila that's clear, like a Blanco, it has no colour, that means it hasn't been aged, really. I mean, it might have been for like, it might have been put in a vat for a few weeks, but it hasn't really had any, you know, barrel ageing. If you buy a tequila that's Reposado, and it says Reposado on it, it means it's been rested. So rested just means it has been in a barrel, but not for very long. So rested tequilas can only by law have been um, barrel aged for two to 12 months. And most tequila makers, they might actually just stage it for somewhere in the middle of that. So maybe for six months. Then you've got the Añejo ones which means aged in Spanish and those ones will have been aged for one to three years and then after that you've got the uh, muy añejo or extra añejo which means extra aged and that's for those super premium top shell tequilas that have been aged for three years or more so obviously more expensive because you know you've got to pay for the storage to actually keep that tequila aged for longer Um, And, you know, you'll get different unusual aromas from that tequila, which has been aged more. But I would argue that, you know, you're going to if I was trying tequila for the first time, really trying to understand the flavors, I wouldn't go for one of those extra aged tequilas because you're not going to really understand the true flavor of the agave if you go for one of those ones, because those very aged tequilas, the muy añejo, they're going to have a lot more influence from the barrel. A bit like wine, you know, the older the wine, there's going to be a lot more of those aromas and flavours that come from the barrel as opposed to the grape. Same with tequila. So, um, yeah, I just recommend for anyone who's never tried tequila, just look for a premium one. Try, for example, you could try really... um, one of the ones I've tried recently is Vivier tequila and they are really good premium tequila makers um, and they're very big on sustainability as well so they make sure that you know for every agave that's chopped down they're replanting and they're trying to you know be very um, sustainable and not use you know horrible chemicals to sort of influence the growth of the, um, the agaves. Um, Or, you know, if you want to just try a household name that, you know, you want to try a trusted brand, you could, of course, try Patron. 
um, you know, or Don Julio, one of those big international brands um, that as that is also known for its quality as well. Um, but definitely, if you are trying to kill it for the first time, do do try a blanco, try one of the unaged ones, and that will really give you a sense of the flavour of the agave. All right, guys, I'm going to be doing more videos, but I'll be talking about other different agave spirits than tequila for the rest of the week.